Hi, Hassan. Uh, hi, Ismail. How are you? I'm very fine, Fred. How are you today? I'm fine. How is Yumbe district? Yumbe is just hot. It's hot? The sun, yeah, the sun is burning us seriously. Rained. It rained. It just stopped a few minutes ago in Kampala. Yeah. It's hot this side. We're just following dust every day. Oh my God. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> But it's the season, so it shifts the time. Okay. Okay. All right. Um first of all, all of you are um, I welcome to our live today. This is called Me Free Dance. Today we um we have a special guest. He's my very 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 good friend. Uh Ismail Hassan. We went to uni together. He's he's a photographer and of recently I just learned that he's so much into sheer butter. Uh I was so so amazed when i learned that he's he started um producing tea butter uh, let's hear some information about ismail uh hassan abita uh left out some useful information about him okay so now Welcome. thank you um dear viewers uh my name is ismail hassan as uh fred has reiterated before i am um i am uh, the public relations and uh and uh, a digital marketer for Shea Nuts and Natural Oils Conservation Limited. Uh, Shea Nuts and Natural Oil, uh, Shea Nuts and Natural Oils Conservation Limited uh, was uh, incorporated in. Uh, it's a it's a private sector company uh, that was incorporated in uh, the year 20, 2020 to add value to Shea Nut and also to natural oils um, because of the emerging threats that are arising uh, within the Shea Nut conservation. Especially in the Shannon Belt of West Nile, uh, the company had to incorporate aspect of conservation into 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 the work. So basically, I do digital digital marketing and public relations for them. Now, um, the issue about the share the Nilotica we call it Nile Vitellaria paradoxi is that uh, it's endemic to northern Uganda and it stretches to southern southern Sudan. It's um, it's a cousin to the West African uh, share butter. All the Shana mm. trees of West Africa. It's I've known of the one from Morocco, I think. There is one from Morocco and Ghana or something. I don't know. Morocco, Morocco doesn't grow Shana. Shana, uh, Shana grows uh, in West Africa, Ghana. You have Nigeria. You have Benin. You get it? Those are the countries that are well known. Now, um, the Nilotica vitoria grows in northern Uganda and parts of southern Sudan. Now, in northern Uganda, it stretches from West Nile. Up to up to Acholi subregion, Acholi and Lango subregion plus Teso, part of Teso region. Uh, however, uh, this region's faced turbulence in the past years. That's why uh, that's why the analytical vitelleria hasn't been known or hasn't been so much captured in the world market. Why? Because the regions were very inaccessible because of the earlier incidents we had about, and then mm. uh, we had of the insecurities that arose from the Amin's expulsion where people went into exile and went southern Sudan. We look at that history, then you come back to the LRA, then you know, it, it, it had made it so so very unsafe for people to access uh, to access the Shana trees. But however, yeah, many stakeholders are getting on board and are trying to maximize on the economic significance of the Shana trees or the Shia butter, especially the analytical material. Uh, with cases that we as uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> We are Shia Nuts and Natural Oils Conservation Limited. We are also we are, we are we are also part of the stakeholders that are getting involved into that. Now, what we are doing is that uh, as a business, we we have laid down strategies that could help conserve the Shia Nut trees. In that, many of the Shia Nut trees are being cut down for charcoal. They say the charcoal is they, they say the charcoal is very very good, so people mm-hmm. are cutting it down for the charcoal. So it doesn't make it doesn't have an economic sense. Now, if someone cut a shana tree, one shana tree that grows for about 300 years, that starts producing, that starts producing in 20 years time, then you cut it down, you shorten its life cycle, uh, its lifespan by cutting it down for charcoal. Yet that charcoal, if let's look at the market value of charcoal from this end, a bag of charcoal would cost around 15 to 20 thousand shillings. <laughs> Then uh, maybe when you sell it out out of here, probably could sell it around forty or fifty thousand shillings. But here, within where people come and source from, is fifteen thousand shillings. Now we are saying as a company that 
Now, if we, if you sell us your nuts, we shall, we have a, we have a, we have a, a price that's quite fair, what we call a fair trade policy, in that we want our people to benefit from the product, you know, from conserving the trees because these trees grow wild. They're, they're growing wild here. They're not planted by anyone. They say they're planted by God, you know. So the trees grow wild here. So we're telling people, uh, one, we shall, we shall offer uh, a fair price for the shea butter or for the shea nuts compared to any other company. You get it? Because most of the companies that buy shea nuts from these ends pay between 800 to 1,000 shillings. You get it? Now what we're doing is that because we want to empower the communities to see the economic sense of having a shea nut tree standing, we have a uniform price, whether in whether in low in, 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 in low production or in high production. So our uniform price is that we'll be paying them around 1,500 shillings per kilo. <laughs> So imagine um, a shea nut tree can produce between 30 to 40 kilo or 50, depending. Wow. Now, if, if you multiply that by 1,500, 1,500, that gives around 75,000, between 75,000 shillings. You get it? You know that. Let's say 50 kilos. Or if you're getting it at, uh, let's say you get you have a price at 30 kilos, that's around uh, 45,000 shillings. Now, if you're selling chapel at 15,000 shillings, yeah? It doesn't that's make a, sense. A, that's a one term, you know. You cut it down. You have you have invested two bucks. You're selling it at fifty thousand. That's thirty thousand. You will not be earning money continuously. But now, if you keep the tree standings every year, you are expected of getting between. If depending on the trees you have, you expected you expected of getting between forty five thousand and above, for wow. thirty kilos and above. So imagine if you have if you have like ten trees standing. Let's say you have 10 trees standing at 300 kilos of shea butter, then you multiply by that money. That's that's almost uh, around 4.5, you know, when you look at it. Quite a number, quite a lot of money, you get it. So these are initiatives that we brought up. In, um, in the recent past, uh, last year, we we organized the Shana tournament. And that tournament was basically so, to raise awareness. Like before you go that further, um, yeah. would like to know, someone who is out there would love to know, um, the process, how do you guys produce that shea, shea butter? Of course, you have told us that these trees grow by themselves, right? And they're very good trees and all that. But what's the process? How do you guys um, end up identifying the trees and then picking the shea nuts? And then can you take us through that process like briefly? So from, from that fruit, uh, from that fruit, you get the seed. That's the nut, you know. The nut is dried. The first process involves drying it, of course, when it's dried. Mm -hmm. After drying, you when we buy from the out from the outsourcers, in that what they do is that we come and grade. Yeah. You know? We grade, we select the best, the best nuts for the oil. You you, you get my point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we select the best nuts for the for the oil. So from the nuts, what we do is that uh, after after grading them. We, we crack, we crack open and pick the shea nut seed from the nuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it's opened, then we first wash it. After washing, we, we, we dry it up. So after drying it, then we pack it some, of course, that's for, for other days. But then for production, we introduce them to a, into a cold press machine. Okay. Now from the, the cold press machine, what does is that it's, uh, it squeezes. Oh, it squeezes, it extracts. Sorry, let me use the word extract. It extracts the oil from it. Okay. Yeah, now the oil goes through a process where it's filtered. From filtered, the other sludge are removed, are excreted aside, but then the oil is filtered, then it brings in a sheer, the sheer oil. Now, this sheer oil at room temperature settles and becomes a butter, the yellow ivory, but kind of, but you look at it, it looks yellowish like ivory white, you know? That's yeah, a butter. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. That's really interesting, an interesting process. Isn't it so long? Does it, how long does it take uh, to pick and then to produce the oil? The, how long does it no, take? Uh, the initial processes of uh, sorting, grading, cracking, uh, washing, and drying usually takes, usually takes around a week or two or three to a month. Mm -hmm. That's a process. Mm -hmm. But then the process okay. of production is just, is just around uh, because a 60 kilogram of, of nuts produces around 20 kilograms of, uh, of butter. You get it? 
So the machine wow. does it takes it around uh, 20 to 30 minutes to extract that. Just that minutes. Let me say 60 kilograms of nuts produces 20 kilograms of butter. Okay. So imagine the rest the rest of the product becomes waste. No way. Yeah. You should so, find other uses for it. So we're trying to yes, we're trying to find out avenues of utilizing also that waste and see what we can produce out of it. Okay. Yeah. So um you say shea butter is edible because me I thought it is not edible. Is it edible? Do locals use it for cooking and all that? Now uh back to that, uh let me give you something that's fascinating. Cleopatra used shea butter, you know, the ancient Egyptian. Uh, it, it's, it's on record that she used it, she used shea butter. If you look at ancient civilization and how they were using it, so she used shea butter. And interestingly, that the shea butter comes along the Nilotica stretch because they're the people of the Nile. But yeah, shea butters, um, they're edible. It's edible because uh, the, the, there are different processes, of course, of making them. Now, for us, we make cold pressed, which we don't roast the nut. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just reintroduce the nuts into the machine and the machine extracts the oil. But then okay. in the local traditional setups for home for consumption is that they roast, they have to roast the nuts. Then after roasting the nuts, then they have to pound it, then fry it to make that, fry it, you know, take it through a process to make it more edible because of that scent. You get it? Oh, it has a funny smell sometimes. Yeah, that, uh, now for the one that is, uh, for the one that is roasted, it has that earth, that earth kind of burnt smoke scent, you know, that is, mm-hmm. that is a smell for it. But now this other one has its, maintains its original complexion and original scent. You know? Okay. And it's called pressed. Okay. All right. Uh, now you have taken us through the process. We want to know what happens next after you have your butter ready. What do you do with it? Yeah, uh, I, I think before we get to selling, we need to first talk about the benefits of shea butter so that we can, uh, <laughs> the viewers out there can get to know what are the importance of shea butter. You know, okay. you get it? Eh? Now, um, because of because of the vitamin A, E, and F, you know, that the shea, the, the shea butter contains, it's an mm-hmm. anti-aging uh, property. Anti-aging? So anti-aging, <laughs> yes. So that means if you are to smear a shear butter, you know, a cold press shear butter or a butter on you, shear butter on you, you will glow even if you're old. You will glow. <laughs> and then um, babies, you know, babies usually have diaper rash, you know, when you wear them with diapers, they get rashes on the butt. Yeah, mm-hmm. that helps them a lot, you know, helps clear off the diapers, uh, the diaper rash. And then um, it also has a, it also has a, it also has a high concentration of oleic acid, yeah, which okay. penetrates into the skin, you know, uh, which mm. penetrates into, easily dissolved into the skin compared to the West African one. You know, the West African shea butter is waxy, you know, it's waxy. Oh. If you smear it, if you smear it in your skin, it takes long to dissolve, to, to penetrate yeah, yeah, your skin. Yeah. It's a but, bit uh, sticky. Yes, but the nilotica easily, yeah, easily penetrates into your skin. So, in the skin, okay. I see. So it, it also has an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti, antiseptic, and uh, skin healing properties. You get it. So it easily repairs the skin. So it's good for oh. it's good for every any kind of skin, and it's also good for the hair as well. You know, our yeah. our ladies love black yeah. dark, and <laughs> wild hair. So the shea butter helps. I can testify with my hair because my hair used to turn brown at one point. It's much. Now it's. it's I can see your hair looking good. Yeah. I thought you so never. It's, it's, hair. It's darkening. You get it. So these are yeah. these are briefly the importance of uh, the shea, uh, the nilotic, nilotic uh, vitellaria, you know, butter. But then the other thing I couldn't, I, I shouldn't, I don't, I don't want to w- wish to forget is that because of its, uh, because it's it's not wax, it's easily melt or it's penetrate the, the skin. It's mostly preferred to use uh, for to, to use as uh, as oil balm. You know, people use it a lot as oil balm as, as well. What? Oil balm, like the ones you know, people ladies use me on the mouth and all that. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Now, let's get back to the marketing bit. Yeah. Um, first, we have a sales outlet in Kampala as well for people within Central Uganda. Then, also have sales uh, outlet in Arua. Then, within Yumba as well. So, in Kampala, uh, we, we sell at around, uh, around Arua Park. We have a store around Arua Park that uh, 
I, I, I freely share contacts with persons who want to, to communicate with our sales person on the other side so that they can get in touch whenever they want orders. Then we're also open for orders uh, even out of Uganda because we have been able to to, to, to make to make deliveries to, to, to clients even as far as Germany, uh, Nottingham, you get it. So we are we are we are welcome to orders. I was uh, I was I was telling our viewers that people who are abroad they appreciate shea butter more than we do because any product with shea butter is sold so expensively. Yeah, that's very true. Now, uh, what makes it very expensive, or what makes the people abroad know much about shea butter, is that uh, uh, Ghana or West Africa has penetrated the, the international the, the international market more than the East African mm. more than the East African community East African shea butter. You get it. So that has they've been able to portion themselves, even though at the Nilotica vegetaria, which is basically grow, endemic to northern Uganda and part of southern Sudan, is the best. You get it. So, like I highlighted before, because of those turbulences, the insecurities that took place in the past that affected access to people mm-hmm. to access uh, the shea shea nut plantations, it it made it so hard to even uh, penetrate the international market. But right now. Mm-hmm. Like a kilo of cold pressed uh, Nilotica shea butter right now costs twelve thousand twelve dollars. You can you can search with a Business Insider because they did a research on that. It costs twelve dollars. But then, uh, like us, we 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 actually selling the cheapest in the market because we're selling it between uh, between eight to nine dollars in that price. Around if someone wants it around thirty thousand Ugandan shillings, you can get a kilo of shea butter. But if you're buying okay. bulk, we can we can reduce on our price to around twenty six thousand a kilo. While well, our counterparts, our colleagues in our business, sell theirs between forty thousand and fifty thousand about a kilo. I'm telling you, it's very expensive. It's very expensive. It is, it is because people know the health significance. You know, people people know the health significance. But exactly. But then, because of the emerging threats, you know, to the Shiana trees, I, I don't want to forget That's this. Can you tell us the threats that are approaching Shiana, Shabat? Be- saying because the young the youth are very energetic and strong you can't find an elderly person going down to cut a strong uh, to cut a tree you know but you find it's the young people that go there so we decided to say let's 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 use it to scout talent as well among these young people mm. uh, as they also help us to go and raise awareness in the conservation of national trees within their communities so uh, the region the uh, the team that participated represented uh, our outreach areas there were nine uh, for last year which included mm-hmm. Kuburo, Aliru, most of them are within the West Nile Shia Nut Belt. Okay. So many of these that participated came in and right now they are on to move back to their communities, we are following up with them. They have okay. a total of around 180 youth uh, wow. are, part of the, are part of the groups that is benefiting from us. Then we have also 300 uh, collector women groups that, uh, mm-hmm. collect, uh, that collect the Shia Nut and sells to us. That is one intervention. Now the second intervention is uh, Shia Nut nurseries. We're putting up Shiana nursery, nursery beds within our premises so that we can help to conserve the Shiana trees. We can we can help nurture the, the, the seedlings and also give out to the communities to help them continuously grow the Shiana trees. Because our business is fully reliant. We like that, yes. Yeah, you can. We like yes, that. Yes. You can. Okay. Yes, you're welcome. Yes. So because our, our business is basically reliant on the, the, Shiana, the existence of the Shiana trees, so we have to conserve them. So we have to have all interventions to conserve them. That's number two. Now, number three, what what other interventions that we have is that we also have we're also promoting in situ conservation, conservation within the Shiana belts. But, uh, for the old immature Shiana trees that uh, that have let's say that have maybe fallen down because of lightning or eaten down by termites, you know, we could uh, we could empower them to create craft products out of it, like craft uh, mortar and pestle, craft sculptures, you know, that will be sold in the near future. So those are the interventions that we have put in place to promote the conservation wow. and the protection of the Shiana trees within. Wow, that's real amazing. You guys are doing a very um, important job, you know. Um, now, Ismail, we, we are about to wind up, actually. We have went beyond our time scale. Before we close, Ismail, I want you to, to encourage the new trees out there. Um, I want you to give them some advice, uh, basing on what inspired you to get into Shiana uh, production and conservation of the environment. 
now uh, first of all uh, by virtue of being an environmentalist you know i've been i've been leading so many green campaigns but yeah. because because i have a deep history a deep connection with the shiana trees on an invitation by the shiana and natural oils conservation limited to come and work with them i felt i felt uh, that's where i belong you know because i grew up eating shiana i grew up eating shia 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 butter we used to eat. my grandmother could put it in food we eat my grandmother could smear with me when i was still a baby so this part of our culture is something that we can we i we easily identify ourselves with which uh, which i believe that every young people every young person out there uh, has a right to protect the, every indigenous trees that exist within their communities because of the emerging threats that i i, I mentioned earlier on what we need to do is that uh, we need a holistic mind you know holistic mind to conserve these trees because if you don't conserve them today will not realize its benefit imagine lately yeah. there are so many cases of, of skin cancer and imagine you know but then we have the we have the foods we have the resources that can protect us from all these illnesses you get it yes. mm. you get it now before i wind up uh there's a there's a there's a holistic doctor that I always follow up it's called dr sebi he passed on it's called He's, he is called dr sebi dr sebi yeah dr sebi says that our food you know the food we eat is what makes we who we we who we are so if you love organic food definitely your life will be more will be reflective of what you eat so we need to conserve every every endemic tree species and we also need to join hands with people that are conserving that's why us as as shanats and natural Oils conservation limited we, we we pride in fair trade because that's where the world is that's what the world wants to hear are you giving fair pay to the people that are helping in the work. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what we're doing. So we are pushing in for conservation. We're also pushing in for the aspect of uh, value addition. Yeah, in the long run, in the near future, in the near future, as we scale at our business, we shall be making share other products from it, which involves we shall make soap, uh, we shall make share gel, we shall make uh, mm-hmm. share lotion. Shampoo. Shampoos. Th- th- these, are, mm-hmm. these, are, these are our future prospect plans that will be happening. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, yes, I do thank everyone who has joining to be part of this session and also appreciate you for taking this time to engage with me to share the things that i love yeah, you know to share you know environmental conservation encompasses all of us we are part of the environment so the environment is who is what makes us thank you thank you so much uh you've had you've had this my message The environment makes us who we are. Let's get into na- conserving nature in all we want. Otherwise, um, I thank everyone who has been watching us. Um, this is Call Me Free Dows, live uh, interactions. Please, when you're, you're live with us, throw in some comments. It's okay. It's live chat. We are chatting together. We are going live together. It's the new feature on YouTube. Um, subscribe to my channel, like all videos, and that. Until next time, bye. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye bye.